Hi, my name's Paul Chanowski, and I'm uh, the artist in residence here at uh, the Shenandoah National Park uh, for a couple of weeks here in September 2020. Um, I live in the central part of uh, Massachusetts in a college town called Amherst, where the university is located, UMass. Uh, I'm originally from a little west of there, the Berkshires. Uh, which uh, some of our mountains are not unlike the ones I've experienced here already, uh, 3,000 feet and above. Uh, and uh, we just don't have as many of them as they do here in Shenandoah. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my work this morning and uh, talk, I guess, about the fact that it's sort of at a crossroads, this body of uh, uh, landscape drawings that I've been doing now for several years uh, and uh, I want to try to cover where they've been and where they might be going and some of the experiments I'll be doing uh, this have been doing and doing this week uh, here at the park uh, this particular drawing you can see the pencil sketch but as I've worked the, the left hand side of the piece there's a uh, I, I like the, the, the light that's happening, and I'm hoping to maintain, again, the, the spare quality of, of uh, not just the mark making, but the density of the mark making as well. When you look at this and compare it to a recent finished work, which is another direction that, you know, is possible to take the work, the work's getting a little bit darker, it's a little bit more about the depth of the forest for me, um, and uh, with the, you know these birches, there's a wonderful contrast. But this work is very different than <clears throat> the work I'm doing over, over there on the left because of once again, there's <clears throat> there's more of a almost a minimalist approach to capturing the landscape in uh, fewer marks. <clears throat> I love this. I love the density. I love the sense of depth and all of that but I'm also drawn to <clears throat> how can I make an image of the forest uh, with less and still give it um, a quality that is visually interesting. I think you know, just philosophically as an artist, uh, a, f a friend of mine whose career sort of parallels my own, we discuss art weekly, usually on the phone and sometimes we meet in New York City because he's out on Long Island and I come down from New England and we go and we have our beer summits, which means lunch, uh, a good quality beer from one of the local breweries, and we talk art. And one of the things that <clears throat> may, we feel has almost been lost in uh, the late 20th century and certainly into the 21st century is a sense of beauty. <clears throat> and uh, it's more about, n not always, uh, but it's often about <clears throat> uh, shocking the viewer or um, just trying to make a statement that is, has less to do with the object being uh, just a beautiful object and more about capturing someone's attention. And I think you can do both. And uh, so <clears throat> on my work, as well as Scott's, tends to uh, move in the direction of trying to perhaps, you know, make a statement in my case about the landscape, but also do it in a way that grabs the viewer's attention, not because it's uh, uh, shocking in any way, but, it, but it, 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 the beauty of the piece attracts the person and then they look at it more carefully and they start to have a dialogue with it. And then uh, you, know, you, you come away with, uh, uh, the viewer comes away with a, an experience where hopefully they bring their own, uh, their own story, if you will, to the work. So, uh, so the it's intriguing to me to make the 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 kind of marks the impressionists were making with pencils or pen and ink with my own technique. Which, oh, by the way, I haven't mentioned uh, all of this work is made by using propane torches of varying sizes to burn <coughs> the image into the wood or the paper. And uh, in the past, this type of process was accomplished usually with <clears throat> a hot stylus, which was plugged into the wall, 
people of my generation remember wood burning sets where you would get a little balsa wood piece with a, a, a sketch of puppy dogs or something on it, and you would take this hot stylus and you would burn the mark in. And, and that work was very, very graphic in terms of it, it very much resembled etching because of the way in which you created a dark area was you put more marks. <clears throat> and with this process, uh, because it's a function not so much, in traditional drawing, it's a function of uh, contact and pressure. So you drag the, the uh, stylus, which could be graphite, could be charcoal, across uh, the substrate and you leave a mark. By in order to burn something, it's, a, it's a, a function of time and distance. It's the distance the flame is from the substrate and it's the time you leave it there. If you leave it there longer, it burns darker. So <clears throat> it allows me, <clears throat> unlike using an etch, uh, a wood burning tool, to create modeled forms. In other words, I can suggest the curve of a tree by modeling the, the form uh, using my particular technique. This is actually indicative of how the work starts <coughs> uh, with a pencil. Well, first of all, it starts with a photograph. And I'm, uh, uh, a lot of artists will, will sketch in the environment. When I was in college and even beyond college, that was a, a preferred method for me uh, because right out of college I was doing some landscapes uh, and I would do plein air sketching primarily with watercolor. But these days <coughs> for me, particularly on a residency like this where I have a limited amount of time and I want to do as much capturing of imagery as I can, when I'm out walking in the woods, <coughs> I've got my Nikon and I've got my iPhone and <coughs> I'm taking photographs. And then what I do is I get them into, the, uh, into my laptop and Photoshop. And uh, what I actually do is I superimpose a grid on top of the, um, uh, the photograph. And then using an old, it's kind of an old master technique, long before photography, <coughs> if uh, Rembrandt or Rubens was going to take a sketch that was, you know, two by three feet and turn it into a monumental painting for the Archduke, what they would do <coughs> is they would do the drawing or, or even do a sketch, but then they would grid it and then they would transfer the grid <coughs> onto the bigger piece. So this is just a 21st century way of doing that. <coughs> so I, I'm literally looking at the computer screen with the grid over the photograph <coughs> and then I'm, I do the, the pencil drawing from that. So it goes from a pencil drawing <coughs> to the burning process. And you can see the burned paper has a very different quality than uh, the burned wood. Uh, the tonal range of paper uh, from white to the, the whitest white to the darkest dark is a little bit wider than on a, a wood panel, uh, whether it's birch plywood or over here we have maple where the tonal range is, is narrower because your darkest dark can indeed be black, but your whitest white isn't a true white. It's, it's, it's the color of the wood. So being here <coughs> at the Shenandoah National Park has been, it's, it's, it almost feels like a part of home. You know, there's a, a, a single mountain in Massachusetts, which is as tall as some of the, uh, some of the mountains here in the Blue Ridge. And it's Mount Greylock. It's about 3,400 feet, just uh, under 3,500 feet. We do get a boatload of snow on it. We ski it in the winter. We climb up it, and we ski down it. Um, and there's no, there's a, there's a historic trail called the Thunderbolt Ski Trail, cut by the Civilian Conservation Corps in the 30s, and we've renova uh, renovated, we've uh, reinstituted a race on the mountain going down that ski trail, and we maintain it every year. So to come to a place where there's multiple Mount Greylocks that I can ride my bike across the ridge line and I can hike down into the gaps has just been so inspirational uh, in terms of, actually I love the hiking around here because having a couple of gimpy knees, I tend to park at the trailhead, descend into a gap or a hollow, which is the toughest part on my knees. I'm a quadruped. I always have a couple of hiking poles and I'm going down, 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 down. And I get to a, a place like 
uh, I think it's called Pocassin, and in some of the other places, Rose River. I think this image is actually from Rose River, uh, that hike. But I go down, 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 and it's like, oh, my knees, my knees. And I get to the bottom, and then I have so much fun climbing back up because there's no pain. And it's just like, yeah, let's do this. And so if all my hiking could be this way, where the easy part is the, the easy part for me is the ascent, and it's usually in reverse. I climb up Mount Greylock and we go up, get up there in 90 minutes. And then coming down, it's just such a, it's such a chore. And here, <laughs> I start at the top of the mountain and then go down and then do my favorite part on the, on the return trip. And so, uh, but anyway, this is the first time I've attempted, and, and it's actually in process. This is a piece of uh, maple plywood I picked up at the Lowe's in Harrisonburg. And this is from an image that uh, I photographed as you walk down uh, the trail on Rose River. I don't know if it's actually the river or, or whatever, but it's just this beautiful setting with all of these smallish waterfalls. And it, it's, uh, it was actually this and this are the first two pieces I've really uh, started in the past seven days to uh, really respond to how, you know, just how inspirational it is to be here in the park. Uh, I don't know how the heck I'm going to burn this piece of wood to even suggest the water, but uh, in, in any event, it's uh, kind of, it's, it's just great to be here, and uh, I think I'm going to get uh, a lot of work out of this. I think I said, I may have said earlier that my process isn't so much about sketching in the environment. Uh, it's more about digitally capturing photographs that I can then in turn make drawings from and then uh, use the burning process to create uh, my finished work. So I got the image up and using the grid, which is on the piece of paper, right? And I can get the basics, the basic composition, but it's very skeletal and there's a lot of editing that's being done because when this piece is finished, you know, it resembles, you know, it's my interpretation of what I saw. And in drawing, particularly in drawing, the landscape is so extraordinarily complicated, which is why the Impressionists would just blow me away the way they would have drawn this, right? Uh, but what's interesting is, to me, is that the editing is part of the creative process, right? And, and it's, it's so often about, you know, uh, uncomplicating the image, simplifying it. And so, so I work here and then, and then go and then burn the piece. And so this is the basic skeletal sketch. And then every step of the way, it gets altered, you know, and, and, and I will, I might refer to this when I'm drawing, when I'm using the, the jeweler's blowtorch to burn, but I'm only referring to this uh, in kind of the big picture sort of way, because I'm not going to look at where that leaf is, you know, it's like, oh, there's, there's a, there's a branch of leaves going this way. Okay, so it's been sketched in, so, well, Okay, so maybe I can gain some information from this, but then it really becomes a drawing up there. I mean, uh, the example of the piece I took down uh, of the birches, you know, there's so much invention in there, which is what really gets me excited. So, so much like the this image and that image, here's one that I've been working on on wood, and you can see the very clearly see the graphite uh, drawing that I made, and you could see the photograph it was based on. And, okay, step one of the graphite drawing is, look how much simplification took place from the, the photograph itself, the printed out photograph, to the basic skeletal drawing on the wood. And then, what's interesting to me is, so any of these dark passages, this is complete invention, you know, it's improvisation. And that's what, if, if I was doing a, uh, if I was in a, not so much if I, I shouldn't 
I shouldn't impugn an illustrator. But these are not illustrations. These are my responses. And there's, a, there's all of these steps. I'm inspired by the, the, by the environment. And that's, I'm getting so much inspiration from here at the Shenandoah National Park to go out, take the photographs, right? And then start the, my process, which is to work from the photograph, simplify it from photo, you know, whether it's on my computer or here in a photograph, make the drawing, but know, knowing from the start that this is going to be so transformed from the original photograph to the finished piece, it's, I, it's just part of the process. And not only is there simplification, but there's all of this wonderful sort of improvisation and you know the mark making that I'm so inspired by with the Impressionists. This is one of the darker, denser ones, but some of these newer pieces that I've started here at the park are just gonna be, uh, for me, a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to keep them light and airy, and then whether or not I deconstruct them, you know, I'll come to that you know, decision at that point. But there's this wonderful step-by-step -step process, each step, has a different level of uh, sort of intensity or interest or ins uh, inspiration of it in its own right. Once it becomes a drawing, then it's about the drawing. It's, it, it's certainly still about the landscape as the source material, but then as an artist, I get excited about the kind of marks I can make, the, how I can make this a visually interesting and beautiful artwork. So in 2020, with the, uh, I was given a very short amount of time to take what I had from the 12 by 12 project, uh, add more pieces to it, and in January of 2020, I had a show of the landscapes in New York. And, but it was the jeweler's blowtorch that really made it all possible because having started to work on smaller pieces, I couldn't use the bigger torches that I was using on the commission, the big pieces. So this became my go-to uh, tool for smaller works. And it's great as I do smaller works now, particularly on a, a residency like this, where I really don't want to start a big piece because how far could I get with it? But uh, it allows me to work smaller and get the detail I you know, long for uh, using the, the burning technique. So right now I'm going to take this sketch, which was from, I don't know if it was Pocosin or the Rose River, but I'll show you. See, I test it out up here, and that's giving me a nice fine line. So I can just dig in. And I talked earlier about the fact that My drawing process is a question not of contact and pressure, but rather of time and distance. And so even though I'm getting very close to the paper with the point of this, I, those two aspects are still in play here because I have to be very careful about the time this flame is contacting the paper. in order to get this final line. So because drawing with a flame is a function of uh, time and distance, uh, when you're doing a small piece like, when I'm doing a small piece like this, you know, I, technically, if you wanted to argue, I am almost touching the paper, but the time factor is huge. And I'll give you an example of that. So if I drag the stylus with the flame, the propane flame across the, the wood, which is holding up the, the paper here, at a very rapid pace, that's an amazingly thin line. If I slow the drag down, watch what happens. And I'm gonna try to do, see how much thicker the line is? And it's always burns up, so you're getting this little bit of fuzziness based on the grain of the wood. So I've been doing this for, since the mid 90s. Jewelers Blood Torch has been in the last five years, but you know, you develop, anyone would develop a touch for 
their process if they do it as long as I have with this. I'm thinking about a reintroduction of color to the work. Uh, it's been very uh, challenging for me because I've dabbled in it and not liked, particularly liked what, I, uh, what I've done with it. There have been uh, some successful pieces where the uh, color is very subtly applied. So that may be a route I'm going to pursue um, this week as well. Um, there's also another way of using color, and that for me has been, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to respond to the 21st century landscape as I can. And, and I realize this is like an oasis up here, a, a real, uh, almost like a, to use another term, almost like a museum piece. I mean, to be able to get away from concrete and blacktop and, and the city and to come to a place like this, which is just so pristine. I love walking down a trail and it says, and it has a backcountry warning. And, uh, you know, you know you're going into the woods. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not that it's a rarity, but what we're doing to the environment as, as a civilization is just uh, suggestive that <coughs> uh, my son, who's 25, uh, may be seeing things that, you know, when he's my age, in his 60s, uh, he, he won't have imagined. And, you know, the evidence is clear. And so I think as a response to what we as, a, as, a, as the human race is doing to our planet, you know, might be, to me, suggestive in an introduction of color, which is very foreign to the, n the natural color I see here in the park. You know, the, the beautiful, subtle greens and, and the, the bright blue sky and the, and the gray clouds. Um, I can see myself doing drawings which have, are overlaid with very acidic, almost chemical-like colors, you know, to suggest possibly that, well, you know, if, if we don't, stop this you know what will we have and how you know what will our children have in terms of these uh you know magnificent natural uh national parks so uh so that's a you know an another way that i see the work possibly going on I'm, I'm looking through the pages right now I, oh the, and i think the final thing i i want to experiment with which is uh a uh, combination of erasure and just really scorching the substrate, that being the wood or the, or the paper. You know, as an artist, any artist knows that an eraser is a tool. It's not simply to <laughs> take care of your mistakes. You can draw with it. You can do a lot of things. And for me, erasure takes place with a piece of sandpaper on my works on wood. And to some extent, I can erase with the sandpaper on my works on paper. Uh, but what I'm thinking about doing is, you know, creating landscapes which uh, are uh, very, you know, fairly straightforward, hopefully keeping that kind of light touch of the Impressionist, but then sort of deconstructing the landscape or deconstructing the picture I've made of the landscape. And that, for me, might be with er erasure or, or even more burning where it it becomes obscured, suggesting, you know, destruction or, or loss or uh, disappearance. And uh, um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to consider uh, just where, you know, our uh, policies may be going in terms of the environment, but it's, uh, it's, it's certainly unsettling times and I can't help but to, you know, respond in my own way. And, and I think that's more than just making a, a beautiful image of the landscape. I think there is that, uh, you know, and maybe someone looks at that and, and realizes we need to preserve this. But another way is to suggest uh, the possible loss of this and how you do that uh, visually, how you do that subtly. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I know, but I, I'm feeling like what a great place to be, to be thinking about these things, to be able to capture what it is now and what it can be if we as you know uh, as uh, hu as the human race can come to our senses and realize that some of the things we're doing are are very very detrimental to uh, you know the beautiful landscape we have here in north america and as we know as far away as the the glaciers and uh, uh, so 
um, I think it's, it's going to be a great opportunity for me here and beyond my experience of uh, walking around in these beautiful woods and, and taking photographs and turning them into uh, my own particular type of art uh, to also suggest that you know there, there's more to it than uh, uh, just the picture itself. Let's let's think about this. Let's uh, let's uh, consider about preserving this. So. After several days here in the Shenandoah National Park, I started to get my feet on the ground, literally and figuratively, uh, doing some hiking, doing some bicycling, and uh, sitting down with my notebook and trying to get a sense of how I could best use the inspiration of this wonderful place to uh, advance my work. You know, I'm, uh, my work is basically uh, landscape drawing and there's plenty of beautiful landscapes here to capture and try to interpret in my own way. And um, after those first few hikes, I started to think more in the way of what is it about my art that uh, I want to move forward. And as I started to write in my um, notebook, I realized that over the several years I've been making landscapes or return to landscapes, uh, I've uh, been on a main road, that being the landscape. And for me, that's been primarily the Berkshire Mountains of Western Massachusetts. Uh, and I came to realize that now that I'm here, not only is there a similarity with my home turf, but uh, it, this is an opportunity, a real focused work opportunity to be able to get off of that main road, which is landscape, and within the context of my very specific work, what are the little experiments I've done over the past several months um, that I could really dig into here? And so I actually started <coughs> Uh, writing them down in my notebook and uh, thinking more deeply about them and knowing that in this second week of my residency I can really kind of start the process of choosing several of these uh, avenues and uh, going down them and seeing uh, what results. My time here at the Shenandoah National Park is been extraordinary. I'm uh, midway and uh, I've got another week of uh, hopefully good uh, work to be done and, and art to be created and so I wanted to take the opportunity to <coughs> thank the Shenandoah National Park Trust for its continued support of this program. It's, it's an opportunity that uh, anyone who is serious about art making would just uh, love to have. It's, it's uh, not only are, is the setting beautiful and the accommodations great uh, and the freedom to do what I want to do, uh, the people supporting the program here uh, have been wonderful and uh, helpful and it's just been, uh, uh, I'm halfway through and it's been a great experience and I'm, I'm looking forward to the next week. Thanks again.